Hey guys, what's going on? This is your old pal CHH letting you know that this Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time, our full moon collection is launching on youneedacandles.com. We have three Puppet Master melts with Six Shooter, Blade, and Torch. We have three Demonic Toys Wax melts with the Jack Attack, Baby Oopsie, and of course my personal favorite, the Terror Teddy. And we had to do... One of the best full moon movies, a wax melt for the great Castle Freak. Be sure to follow our Instagram page for more info on these melts. And be ready this Saturday, April 13th at 6 p.m. Central Time, we are launching our entire collection. And you also get new exclusive stickers when you order more than one melt. See you guys this Saturday, 6 p.m. You need a candles.com. Hey guys, happy Friday. This is your old pal CHH here. Now today's video is going to be about the 2001 movie Jason X. We've been having a great time covering these Fridays and I figured enough time has gone by. Let's retrospect Jason X. As always, I'd like to tell you guys the story about my first time seeing Jason X. Well, believe it or not, this was actually the very first Friday the 13th film I ever saw in the movie theater. This is when I was living down in New Orleans before Hurricane Katrina and I was 10 or 11 years old. We went and saw something at the theater in 2000. It might have been the Rugrats movie or something but what I do remember as we were coming out of the theater there was a coming soon section high high up on the wall and I remember looking up and seeing this crazy looking image of Jason now I knew the name Jason really before I knew the term Friday the 13th as I think a lot of people probably did and I remember looking up and seeing Jason X and I remember telling my mom please mom let's see that let's see that I want to see Jason I mean she had let me dress up as Jason for Halloween before I'd ever seen any of the movies and sure enough a year later when it came out I begged my mom and she took me and my brother to see Jason X in the movie theater now one thing I do remember about this was that the theater was less than packed. Now, this is not something that I put two and two together with until years and years later when I would start to study the Friday movies was Jason X was not exactly the highest grossing Friday the 13th film, but this is what I'll never forget. After about the five minute mark when you see Jason chained up in the beginning of the movie, guys, I will never forget just losing it. I was terrified and I tried not to play it off, but my mom knew this is a mistake taking this kid to this movie. And this is the interesting thing about movies like this, is that when you're young, you don't see the humor and stuff like this. It's just so in your face real hard that everything is just terrifying. It wouldn't be for me till years later where I'd go back and see Jason X and I would see like, oh, this movie is hysterical. It was so bad, in fact, that a few years later when Freddy vs. Jason came out, my mom never forgot the experience I had with Jason X and refused to let me see Freddy vs. Jason in the theater. Now, it wouldn't be until years and years later that I would actually see Jason X again, but this time it would come into my life at one of the most crucial points. So if I can indulge you for just a second, I graduate high school in 2010. I've told this story a thousand times, so I'll keep it very much brief. I got bit by the horror bug in a big, big way in 2009, and I started buying up any kind of Friday the 13th movie I could see. Well, around that time I graduate high school and I'm going to college, and I didn't know what to really major in. And one thing that was a major constant in my life, especially in high school, was drumline. I played in drumline all four years I was always involved in the music department at school I am a musician so naturally that's what I did well I signed up to major in music at my college after around four days of training camp with the drumline and the band and everything I realized I love music, but there's zero way in hell I actually want to go to school for this. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it, but in my pit, I knew music is my hobby and I love to do it for enjoyment. I don't want to get graded on it. I don't want to study it. I don't want to do any of that. I don't know what I was thinking. So I remember freaking out, having a breakdown with my mom about this. I was like, mom, I can't do this. I talked about it. I decided to not major in drumline. And that day I was just really depressed. Felt like I had let my teachers down and I felt like I let my my parents down a little bit and I felt like I let myself down like I didn't know what I was doing with my life but I was still working I had a job at this time and so I remember going to Walmart the very next day and I found something really cool the Friday the 13th Jason slasher collection which included the three new line titles Jason goes to hell Jason X and Freddy versus Jason now I have mine till this very day and I always tell collectors if you see this in the wild grab it 
it's just a cool looking release. And I decided I needed to watch something fun. Now I needed to pick one that I thought was going to be funny or entertaining or just take my mind off of things. And I decided to put on Jason X. Watching Jason X that day gave me an absolute hour and a half of forgetting about my problems, forgetting about what I was going to do, forgetting about the stress of what's my next step in life. And I was able to sit there and laugh for a good hour and a half. And I'll never ever forget reconnecting with Jason X. At the time, especially on the internet, you either liked or you hated Jason X. One of the biggest complaints I used to always hear was, well, this film's not really scary. But I clearly don't think they were trying to do that. Interestingly enough, Todd Farmer did initially have a treatment that was going to make the film scary, but that's not the direction they went to at all. Whether you want to call it a scream influence type movie or not, I don't think you can really look at Jason X as a movie that was trying to become a part of that zeitgeist in a big way, because to me, what's so interesting about Jason X is I feel like it's still so much a Friday the 13th film above anything else. One of those things I think has to do with a character being portrayed by the legendary Kane Hodder. By this point, Kane Hodder had it down to a science. This was his fourth movie in the Friday the 13th series, and if anybody had a good sense of what the character would or wouldn't do, it would be Kane. Kane was probably really looking forward to doing this movie, considering the last movie he did well, there wasn't exactly a whole lot of Jason in his suit as we know and love him. Going into Jason X, I can imagine Kane was ready to rock and roll. Now let's talk a little bit about the look of Jason in this film. There's two looks of Jason in this film. Now, of course, we have the pre-Uber Jason look. Now, Jason's in his ratty clothes. He's got a different shaped hockey mask, which is a little awkward at first seeing it. But, you know, after you watch these movies for years and years, you just start to, like, love the individualistic feel of each film. You start to appreciate the different looking masks. But you can clearly see that Jason X's mask is different in every way, even, like, the shape and dimensions of the mask itself. Jason also isn't a zombie anymore. He has more of that human flesh tone look. Now, granted, he's not really human considering they're talking about how he can regenerate dead tissue, which was an interesting avenue that they went down, especially with the fact that we get to see David Cronenberg playing a doctor in the beginning of the film, which he has an incredibly funny death scene. From what I understand, came from the request of David himself. If he was going to be in this movie, he wanted to be killed by Jason, which probably goes to show that Cronenberg probably enjoys a few Friday the 13th movies, if I had to guess. But overall, I would say the pre-Uber look of Jason is pretty good. I don't know if I would say it's the worst. I don't think there is necessarily a worst look of Jason at all in the series, but there is certainly individualistic feels to the Jason X look of Jason. I like it, but it's not my favorite. To me, the absolute home run of Jason X is absolutely the uber Jason look. Now, this movie being a space movie, definitely they wanted to play around with some of the designs and the futuristic feels and looks of things. And the uber Jason look to me is just so freaking cool. Now, I'll never forget as a kid, now seeing those demon eyes in this movie that Jason had took me from a level 9 scare to a level 11 scare. And there's a really cool sleekness and just this strength that Uber Jason shows. Now, there are some people that would say that maybe the Uber Jason look is somewhat cheap. I don't know. As a matter of fact, I was re-watching the film on high definition earlier on my Blu-ray, and I actually think that the design looks really good under the scrutiny of Blu-ray. I actually would really voice a disagreement with that notion, and I think the Uber Uber Jason look is incredible. You can almost argue it's a top five look that Jason ever had. Now, when it comes to horror comedies, much less horror comedies in space, they can be extremely hit or miss. Comedy is obviously the most subjective thing in the world. People either find stuff funny or they don't. It's hard to find much in between with comedy. People really don't say, well, that comedian's okay. They usually say, I like this comedian or I don't. So when you do a horror style comedy film, I think that's probably why there's a seesaw. People either love it or they don't. Me, on one hand, I actually find Jason X to be a pretty damn funny movie. One of my favorite moments is when the teacher calls up one of his higher-ups. It's this old guy laying in bed who gets, like, this iPad that comes over his face, and he is really grumpy talking about, oh, what do you want to bother me with now and all that. I thought that conversation those two guys had was a highlight of the film, and I loved that old man character. I just thought he was grumpy, mean, and just really funny at the same time. Even when they had some of the more erotic sex 
scenes that you would kind of see in a Friday the 13th film, they kind of really flip that on its head in Jason X. And to me, I just got a genuine kick out of that. There's a lot you could like dive into with this guy where he loves to get his nipples pinched during a, you know, sexual exploration, if you will. No pun intended. I think taking all that stuff and flipping it on its head worked really well. It doesn't mean that I think every character in this movie is necessarily just funny to me, but I would say it's a lot more funny than unfunny. Like I said, this is a very subjective thing. So when there's criticisms about Jason X just not being that funny to them, can't really argue that. That's up for you to decide. What do you think? Now, the idea of Jason going to space is probably one that not a lot of people would think would be the right way to go. But when you look at history, they needed to kind of keep the Friday the 13th buzz going. I've talked a little bit about the development hell of Freddy vs. Jason, and they were developing scripts as soon as 1994, but this thing would start and stop more times than anybody could possibly count. I've only tapped the surface on the history of Freddy vs. Jason. So Sean Cunningham had the idea to, let's get a Jason movie going in the meantime, and they I thought, what's one way we could do this where it could not possibly mess with the story of Freddy vs. Jason whatsoever? And that's where I think they realized there is one kind of movie we could make that couldn't mess with the Freddy vs. Jason movie. That's doing something in space and in the future. I think more so it had to be in the future than it would have to be with in space, but maybe I'm just speculating on that. I guess you could almost say, what if they would have remade Friday the 13th at that point, but maybe that would have just opened up a whole bag of worms that they didn't want to do. Regardless, I think they did the same thing, which is to make a movie in the future in space. And one thing I like about this movie that I don't think people realize is a lot of movies that we watch now, especially that are somewhat vintage, like Jason X is, considering it's over 20 years old, is the fact that they used a futuristic date that was truly futuristic. How many times have we seen movies now, like Back to the Future Part 2, where... That, that movie's almost 10 years in the past, and it's set as a future movie. We're all going to feel really old watching these movies now, so I love the fact that I will be dead and gone long before we get to the year that was in Jason X. I think it was like 24-something. And there's even a funny thing where they say that hockey was going to end in the year 2024, so... Don't think that's happening. All in all, I actually think Sean Cunningham did a really great job producing this. He picked a great guy to direct the movie, and they put a lot of faith in Kane Hodder to know what was the right and wrong things to do with the character. Another thing that I think is so great, a lot of Friday the 13th fans will tell you that Jason X has possibly one of the greatest kill scenes of all time. Ice water, head smashing scene. It is remarkably cool. And on a really big TV, it holds up against scrutiny so well. The makeup effects for that are sensational. They just did an incredible incredible job with that. I also think that this is one of the first movies that was shot on film and then processed digitally to send over so the effects people could work on it too. Sean talked about this on the making of Jason X on the Friday the 13th Scream Factory box set and again I just always like to sing Sean Cunningham's praises. I think he's a guy that likes to blaze his trails and do things in a new way and I thought that was really cool to learn that Jason X was one of the first movies to kind of do things that way so cheers to Jason X. Here's the thing about Jason X. I wouldn't call it a perfect movie, but I also don't like to look at it as, well, if it had more money, well, if it had this, well, if it had that. Look at what they did with a small budget. I think Jason X is actually a really brave movie to try to do all the stuff they did space-wise with the limited budget they had. And I actually think it holds up pretty damn good over time. And I also think that Jason X is not a bad way for a Kane Hodder to stop his reign as Jason. Now, Kane has vowed that he is not done with that hockey mask. And honestly, I hope he's right. But in the event that this is Kane, I think I can speak for a lot of Friday the 13th fans when I say... You killed it in Jason X. And if that is the last one, you're the man. So guys, tell me your story with Jason X. Is it a movie that you've always liked, always disliked? Did you change your mind on it? And what's your favorite moments from the movie? Anyway, guys, happy Friday, and I'll see y'all next time. Huge, giant thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Without you guys, this would not be possible. To get behind-the-scenes photos, videos, music, private live streams, and much more, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you to my patrons.